Like I said, you will typically get a lead into this. So um, part A might be, for instance, consider this guy, uh, one plus x to the n. Think of the binomial theorem. You can tell me what I should be adding up here on the right hand side, right? What would you like me to put down? From? Zero. Okay, let's go with k's. I could have done n's, but it doesn't matter. From zero to n of what? What am I gonna, what's the general term? Oh, one, one, power, and one, yeah. Thank oh. you. We've actually chosen K, but whatever, okay. Um, you've got to do the binomial coefficient first, and then you think, well, I've got some of these, and I've got some of these, right? For completeness sake, I'm going to write, there will be some number of ones. Okay, I want to make this easy for myself, so am I going to say to the power of K, or am I going to say to the power of N minus K? N minus K. Okay. And then I'm left with X lots of, sorry, K lots of X. Yep, that look okay. So in a second, I'm going to get rid of that factor of that multiple of one, which doesn't matter. But from here, I can get to this guy by differentiation. Now, usually the question will kind of lead you into that and say, by differentiating both sides of this, show that this is the case. But there's another clue for you that tells you, like there's kind of this, you know, a smoking gun that says, oh, this is clearly differentiation. Have a look at the line you're required to prove. Which part of that looks suspiciously like a derivative? Looks like the right hand side to me, doesn't it? Doesn't this look like a, a, an nx to the n minus one? That's just standard differentiation, differentiation, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start from this line, this consider line, and I'm going to differentiate both sides. Okay, I'm gonna differentiate both sides. So if I do that, uh, what am I gonna get up the front? I'm gonna have m one plus x to the n minus one. Gee, that looks helpful, right? You see my n and my n minus one in the right spots. Now have a look at this. Remember, sigma notation just means I want to add up a whole bunch of things. And the derivative of a sum, thankfully for us, is just the sum of each of the individual derivatives. Okay, So that's really nice and convenient. You're going to get that nck term out front. Um, we already know not to worry about the 1. What's going to happen here? K, k x to the k minus 1. Okay, good. Right. Now, my task is to say, well, what's going to happen to get me from here to the result I had before? Now, remember, you already have two methods up your sleeve, right? And I want you to use one of them again. Substitution. Substitution, okay? I've got a 1 plus x, but I'm supposed to have a 2. So the obvious choice for x is 1. So I'm going to substitute in. I'm a bit confused. You differentiated in terms of n on one side. No, nope. in terms of all oh, right. In terms of x. Okay. N was the power. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah. So I suppose I should have said, you know, um, differentiating both sides with respect to x. That might be helpful. Okay. So having established that's what I did, I'm now going to put in a value of x, right? And I have to do this after. I can't do it before because I need it to be variable in order to differentiate it. But now I can just put a number in, okay? So it looks like on the left-hand side I get this, which is very promising. And on the right-hand side I'm going to get, well, let's have a look. This is k equals 0 up to m. K. Okay, what gets left behind? It's k times 1 to the power of <coughs> k minus 1. Sweet. I'm pretty much done. I've done all the legwork. All that's left is actually just to write out this thing. Look, it's k times nck. 0, nc0, 1, nc1, 2, da, 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 da. I'm just going to write it out. Remember, you just need the three terms to establish the pattern. And then you're done. Proved. So despite the fact that you maybe thought, oh no, the second method, the first method was okay, the second method seemed really hard, what's the third method going to be like? Actually, calculus makes some of these results just pop out really easily. Okay. Now I said to you, two sides of the same coin, right? So example four, let's see a kind of result that needs to be done by integration. So this result looks a little more icky. It's got fractions and stuff in it, and it has this weirdo thing which we only are familiar with because of, where have we seen this before? 
This is the general solution for sine, right? So what it's doing is it's having that switching factor in here, okay? Which by the way, based on that greatest coefficient question we just did, that should give you a clue as to what kind of expansion you're going to be encountering. Okay, so I gave you a big clue, which was, okay, we did differentiation here. Let's try integration. I'm going to start from the same point, okay? So if you take this and you integrate both sides with respect to x, can you tell me what the left-hand side is going to become? The, um, the power, it increases, and then I divide through by my new power. Yes? How do you, how do you think? Yeah? Okay. Now, thankfully, because it's just the inside derivative just being 1, my reverse chain rule doesn't end up being too problematic. So that's, that's all you get on the left-hand side. What do you get on the right-hand side? Wait, so, yeah? are they constant? What's a constant? I'm starting from here. Wait. Yeah? So this is the result I'm trying to prove. This will be my final line. It's not the first line. Uh -huh. Okay. So there's kind of like a hermetically sealed barrier between here and here. I'm using the binomial theorem, which I can quote. That's the whole point of the topic. I'm using that as my launching point and I'm integrating oh, both sides right now. Oh, yeah, okay, okay you yes. with me now? Yes. All right, that's better. So now I've integrated the left-hand side. The, the integral of a sum is still the sum of the integral. So I can do every single one individually, which means I'm gonna have a new sum here from zero up to n. This nck is still a constant, so it's no big deal. Um, and then you've got the one which doesn't matter, and this guy. What does this guy turn into? The k plus one, like k plus one. Fantastic. The power goes up, and I divide through by the new power. Okay. What do you think? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Except, no. There's something missing. Oh. Oh. I integrated, right? I integrated, and there were no boundaries for my integral. Okay. So there is a constant of integration here, and I kind of need to work out what it is, okay? So, again, remember how we, um, we chose a value here that would get us, can I finish? Okay, yes. yeah, we're almost there. I chose a value of x that would get me straight to that result. That was nice. But now I have this constant flying around and clearly I've got to evaluate it, right? So I'm gonna choose another value of x, maybe one, maybe something else, that is going to get me to that constant the fastest way. Okay? So I want as much of this as I possibly can to just disappear. Okay? So what value of x do you think Negative. would work? Zero. How about zero? Oh, oh, right. Zero is really nice because over here on the right hand side, every single one of your terms has a factor of x in it. So if you make them all zero, everything here just disappears. Okay? So I'm going to say sub x equals zero into this, right? What does that leave me with on the left hand side? No, look carefully. You get one plus zero, which is just gonna be one. On that. Oh look, look, that's kind of sus. Right? Okay. And that's gonna be equal to a big fat zero plus a constant. Okay? So that's what my constant is. Therefore, coming back to this line, I'm just gonna restate it, but I'm gonna restate it with the value of the constant now. And once more with feeling, the result that I'm trying to prove has no x's in it. So I've got to choose another value of x that will get me to this line. I chose a value of x to evaluate the constant. Now I choose a different value that will get me to here. What do you reckon? Now, hmm, the tricky thing is, right? The tricky thing is, I've got these alternating signs that I have to deal with. Okay. Now remember when I told you the example we did like 10 minutes ago is this versus this. Do you remember that? Right. So all I need is for one of my terms to have a negative in it. Well, the only term I'm mucking with here is the x term. Okay. So if I substitute in x equals negative 1, okay, it all just comes out in the wash. In fact, I will show you my working because we should go. Okay. So here's my working. Here's my working. You can see where I've chosen to substitute the value in. Just watch out, there's one little thing that's not obvious before you get to the final home stretch, okay? See, here's me putting in negative one right there. You see it? See it there? Okay. But look, it's negative one to the r plus one. I actually don't want r plus one, 
right? I want that to just be R, so that when I substitute all of these values of R in, the last one will just be M, right? So I actually don't want the plus one in there, so I take it out. I take it out. Is every, that means every single term in my sum has been multiplied by negative one, so I can take it out like that. And that means I can add it to both sides because it's a negative thing, so I'm just balancing, yeah? And I'm done. Okay?